It's easy to talk about desirable traits in men, such as intelligence, loyalty, and integrity. But what about those sneakier traits you may not even know to look out for, but really, really matter? What about those blind spots that get so many women into painful relationships that never should have started to begin with? That's why in today's video, I'm gonna share with you and all my other sisters the seven crucial traits you need to seek in a man if you're dating for marriage or life partnership. I'm gonna take a wild guess and say that if you're watching this video, you're not here because you're looking for a weekend boyfriend, a summer fling, or a friend with benefits. You're probably here because you're tired of all of that stuff and you're seeking a life partner. You're looking for marriage or life partnership. You're looking for a guy who is emotionally in tune with your needs. You're looking for a guy who cannot just be your physical companion of sorts, but who can be emotionally intimate with you, spiritually connected, a guy who stands with you in bad times, a guy who's cheering you up in good times, someone you can share life with the good and the bad. And that doesn't happen by chance. That doesn't happen by winging it. That doesn't happen by not noticing what's really important as you deepen a relationship with someone. So my goal for this video right now is to share with you some of the things that many women don't look out for because no one's taught them how to look for these things. But at the same time, because other traits sometimes take the forefront. Maybe you're talking about chemistry or talking about ambition or physical looks or fun factor. Those things have a place in relationships, but the foundation that I'll be sharing with you right now matters. Now, all of the traits that I'll be sharing with you right now are a gradient. They're not black and white. So I'm going to give you the ability to identify them and look out for them. I want you to step up and decipher for yourself, number one, what degree of each trait is important to you? Because each woman is different. And also what degree of that expression of the trait is the guy you're connecting with displaying? And that way, the combination of both gives you a much higher chance of attracting the right guy for you, of not wasting time with someone who has good intentions, but can never take you to the promised land. And also for stepping into the best relationship of your life so far. The first trait I strongly suggest you look out for in a guy is a clear and specific relationship vision. What does this mean? That he knows ultimately what the end game for dating is for him and what he's looking for in a relationship. A lot of women connect with me and share the type of situationship or relationship pain they're in. And when I take them back to the question, what does he want out of this relationship? They have no clue or they have a fussy vision that needs a lot of refinement and fine tune. Now, why would intelligent, worthy women not know what a guy is looking out for? Sometimes because guys lie, but sometimes because they never asked a question or they never followed up with a deeper question that leads to a very specific answer. And that's why in hundreds of videos that I've shared, I typically include some version of ask the guy what he's looking for in a relationship. If he's unable to share what he's looking for, then he's probably not the guy for you. Also, if he tries to shame you or tell you that you're being too needy or that you're being weird for asking those questions, that shows you that the guy doesn't probably have the same vision of a relationship. Because here's the thing, if a guy knows he's looking for marriage, ultimately, if he knows he's looking for a specific type of relationship, then expressing it, he's not saying that you are the one for him yet because you don't know each other that well, but being able to express it is the thing that he's going to be able to do. Number two, and this is more and more important every single day, and that's a commitment to mental health. Why? Because there's so much mental instability going around these days and also because there's a lot of help available that wasn't available earlier in life. When a guy has a commitment to mental health, that means he's going to do the things that will also be good for overall health. Why? Because we're talking about exercise. We're talking about perhaps meditation. We're talking about journaling. We're talking about getting help from somebody if they're really in need. We're talking about nutrition, not nutrition to be the strongest guy at the gym, but nutrition that allows his nervous system to act in an optimal way to act in a way that allows the relationship to flourish. I'll say this right now, your relationship will only go as far and deep as your mental health. It is impossible to be mentally unhealthy and have a thriving, fulfilling, growing relationship. So when you connect with guys, figuring out what their habits are like, they're not necessarily going to be able to share all of them all at once, but to be able to notice their commitment to health, their awareness of themselves, their awareness of where they struggle in life and what, if anything, they do about it really matters. 
Third trait I highly encourage you for you to seek out in a man is communication, compassion. Here's why. Because every relationship is going to go through different stages. And sometimes in the same day, you're going to be in sync with each other. You're going to be in this harmony with each other. And you're going to repair those and come back to a state of harmony. So when you have communication, compassion, first with yourself and then with your partner, anything is possible. You can talk about things that matter. You can talk about things that are challenging. You can express needs. You can set boundaries. You can be civil. You can be compassionate. You can grow. When the communication is not compassionate, I don't care if the guy is seven feet tall and height is really important to you. If he's the strongest dude that you've ever seen, if he is incredibly rich and famous, if he's a lawyer and an activist and a saint all at the same time, if the guy doesn't have communication compassion, if he doesn't have that sense of kindness in his expression towards you, then the relationship is going to be severely limited in its capacity to grow for two reasons. One, because this constant state of flux in a relationship that you go through sometimes multiple times in a day is going to lead to resentment, is going to lead to one or both of you feeling unseen and unmet, and eventually going to lead to a lot of mini nuclear explosions within the relationship. There's a beautiful quote by Khalil Gibran that talks about this concept that I'm referring to right now. And it says, between what is said and not meant, and what is meant but not said, most of love is lost. The fourth trait I need you to seek out for in a man is an understanding of patriarchy. And here's what I mean by that. Women have had it rough, and I mean really rough, for a long period of time. And I understand, and there's more vocalization around this, how men have it rough this day and age, how men have had it rough. So I'm not in any way trying to deny the experience of men. But if we have to choose who's got the wrong end of the stick for the most part throughout history, it is not men. It's been women. So if you connect with a guy who is a patriarchy denier, things might be challenging and suffering. And by acknowledging that this exists, by acknowledging that women still have a lot of room to catch up to the privileges that men have, that means he can be proactive in his communication, proactive in his stance towards you. If he doesn't acknowledge that, if he's a denier of sorts, then things might be rough because you might be experiencing one of those relationships, like the 50s kind of relationships, like my grandma experience, where grandpa sets the rules and grandma basically has to take it. And here's the challenging piece of the whole thing. In this whole conversation about masculine and feminine, some things get lost in translation. And some guys use the, you do as I say, and that's not at all what I refer to when I talk about masculine and feminine. I'm talking about an essence and a stance. And I'm talking about polarity of the energies, but I'm not talking about one making the rules and one following the rules. That's not what this is about. So if you connect with men who understand and accept that this world has a bias against women for the most part, although things are changing, then he might be far more willing and able to meet your needs in ways that somebody who's not acknowledging of that will not. Now, before I share my last three points, which are some of the most important ones, if you're a single woman watching this, I would be willing to bet you are not aware of the true cost why you're still single. And what I've done is I've taken 13 years of helping and guiding women in every walk of life, every kind of challenge you can imagine to finally attract amazing relationships that stand the test of time. And I created a quiz with that wisdom, put it together for you that you can take in about 60 seconds. If you want to participate and know the answer to the elusive question why you're still single, all you have to do is go to the first link in the description and in 60 seconds or so, you'll have the answer to the question and also a report based on your specific blind spot that's going to share with you the number one thing you can do starting today to attract the relationship you want in a fraction of the time. Now, in order of increasing consciousness, number five trait I urge you to look for in a man is a desire and commitment for personal growth. There is no shame in being born in a house where personal growth was not part of it or where emotions weren't expressed or where abuse was the name of the day. But to not have the consciousness or the willingness or the desire to grow out of it, that's a different story. So when you connect with a man, the awareness of how much he knows or doesn't know about himself, how much he works on himself, how much he wants to grow and learn, not just things that are good for business and for making a dollar, but things that will feed his soul and his spirit and his mind and his emotions. That's really, really important in this day and age. Number six, trigger awareness. Trigger awareness is in any given interaction with two human beings, there's going to be a reality experienced by him, a reality experienced by her, and somewhere in the middle is going to be an objective reality there. But each person is going to have their own version of it. The more unaware a guy is about his triggers, 
the more likely he is to put his version of reality on you. The more likely he is to say that everything that's taking place is a result of you instead of both of you or as a result of his triggers. When a guy takes the extra step of understanding what are the things he's faced throughout his life, that sometimes a little bit of something creates a big, bulky feeling inside his heart so he can self-soothe, so he can express consciously, so he doesn't have to unleash on people around him, the more likely that partner is to be a worthy partner for you for life. The more unaware he is of his triggers, the more likely he is to react to life, to anything you say with a full blown force of a hurricane thinking that it's the actual response. Number seven is his willingness to grow as a couple. What does that mean? Listen, if you're the kind of human being who's watching this video and you're seeking the type of relationship that most likely no one in your lineage has experienced in quite the unique and special way you want to experience, there is no other way to get there but mutual learning. And that's a lifelong process. If you think that learning a couple of skills and connecting with someone will give you the relationship you want, I'm sorry to disappoint, but that's not how it works. If you want to continue thriving, you both need to make a commitment to continue growing and learning and eventually getting help if that's necessary. So if you connect with a guy who has that willingness, he may not be doing it right now because he's in a relationship, but he has the willingness to continue growing. And I'm talking podcasts, I'm talking books, I'm talking programs out there that help you understand and communicate better. If he's willing to do that, that's a guy you should cherish. Now, my last point for you is this. It's super fun to talk about the qualities you seek in a man. I want to take you one more step from this. I want you to evaluate on the steps that I just outlined right now, where you are in the process. And if you're saying number 10 for all of them, good green lights to you and just go out and connect to the guy you want. If there's a few areas here where you could use some guidance and change, then acknowledge those because you stepping into the highest version of you will give you a much higher chance of connecting to the resonant match to the person you are versus you think you are. Hope this is helpful and useful. If it is, it would mean the world to me and my channel because this is how I can reach more women. If you could like and subscribe and if you want to continue learning how you can attract the guy you want without any for gimmicks, manipulation, games, or stupid techniques, make sure to watch the next video right here.